Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at note number two because what we're trying to do here is find the output voltage in terms of the initial voltage on the capacitor and the various values for the resistors R1 and the feedback resistor. So what we're doing now is we're looking at node 2, realizing that the voltage at node 2 is approximately equal to zero because of a very small difference between node 2 and node 3 in the potential difference. And we know that node 3 is connected to ground, so that's equal to zero. So node 2 is almost equal to zero as well. We also know the definition of the current to the capacitor. And we already found in the previous video that the current to R1 can be defined like this. But now we're interested in finding the current to the feedback resistor which is again equal to the difference in the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance. And to find the difference, we take the where we come from to where we're going through, assuming the current is in that direction. Again, that may not be correct, but we're going to assume the current is in that direction. So the difference in voltage is the initial voltage minus the final voltage. So we get zero minus the output voltage divided by the feedback resistor to get the current as we have drawn it there. So now we're saying, when we look at node 2, we want the current into the node to be equal to the current out of the node. The current into node 2 is the current coming from the capacitor, and the current coming out of the node is the current through the feedback resistor. So we set those equal to each other. The current through the capacitor is equal to the feedback resistor. Right. So we have an expression for the current to the capacitor. We know that's going to be equal to the capacitance times dv across the capacitor times dt. Of course, this is the voltage across the capacitor. And in the previous video, we had an expression for that. We found that the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time is equal to the initial voltage times e to the minus t over tau. So this we're going to need to plug in here. Of course, we first have to take the derivative of that with respect to time. Then the current to the feedback resistor over here, notice that's going to be minus V of the output over R sub F. So that's minus the output voltage divided by the feedback resistor. So now we need to find the derivative of this with respect to time. So the derivative of this, the dV across the capacitor with respect to time is equal to the derivative of this, which would be equal to minus the initial voltage divided by the time constant times e to the minus t over tau. And of course, the time constant is going to be equal to R1c, which is what we found in the previous video. So when we plug that in here, this becomes equal to minus the initial voltage divided by R1 times c times e to the minus t over tau. So this is the change in the voltage across capacitor with respect to time. So now we plug that in here, we have to multiply this times c, so end up with minus v initial times c divided by r1 times c times e to the minus t over tau. And that's going to be equal to the negative of the output voltage divided by the feedback resistance. So first of all, we know that the c's cancel out. We now want to plug that in here. Well, we want to take the r sub f put over here. We want to get rid of the negative signs. And we want to turn the equation around. So the output voltage as a function of time is going to be equal to, bring this across, we have the initial voltage times the feedback resistance divided by R1 and then times e to the minus t over tau. And I believe that's our entire equation right there when you realize that tau is equal to R1c. And so here we now have an equation for the output voltage in terms of the initial voltage across the capacitor, the feedback resistor, R1, and the time constant. And that's how it's done. That's how we understand the voltage of the output of that operational amplifier.